Welcome back to an instant reaction edition of the Night Report podcast. It's been a, about a week since the last time we recorded, but uh, I, I texted Richie last night. That we should probably record like a you know some kind of update on recruiting because you know there's been a lot of news about like Ace Bailey and Dylan Harper, and he's like, ah, maybe tomorrow. Sure enough, like an hour later, we get a commitment from <laughs> Delquan Warren, uh, the the four star top 100 kid out of uh, Erie, Pennsylvania, Keystone Athletic Academy. I'm your co-host, Mike Broadbent. Joining me once again is Richie schneider -Ape. We have a lot to talk about here. Let's uh, let's go right into it with this commit. Delquan Warren, he's a uh, 6'2", 180-pound point guard, uh, class of 2024. Kid's super athletic, great defender. Uh, what? Just tell us a little bit about this kid and how the commitment came together. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, they've been on Delquan Warren for a while. Uh, they were one of his earlier offers. I know, I think Marilyn was his... Uh, his first power five offer, if you want to call it that high major offer, whatever. Uh, yeah. So he was originally from, he played at Spire Academy, which most Rutgers fans know of as a uh, Caleb McConnell's old high school or prep Academy, whatever you want to call it. They're same thing at this point. Uh, yeah, no, they've just been putting in a lot of work. Delquan Warren uh, recruited by TJ Thompson, who's, who's been kind of an ACE recruiter this recruiting class, or I should say the past couple months. Uh, he was the main recruiter for Gavin Griff's. The main recruiter for Delquan Warren. He's the main recruiter for one of their best big man targets, which we'll get down in Juice Limboto, who we'll talk about in a little bit. But uh, yeah, they just put in a lot of effort here. And then he uh, he he actually, ironically, was told that rivals. I want to say, I'm looking at it now, 11 days ago, uh, that he was gonna he was in one of those tournaments, and one of our national analysts was there, and he was going to go to uh, multiple schools and visits. Like obviously, Rutgers was one of them, Mississippi State, Alabama, Illinois, and Louisville were the five schools he was going to go visit. And then all of a sudden he went to Rutgers after their, uh, their big holiday tournament at the rack and they just locked him up. And that's, that's what big coaches do. That's what big name programs do. These kids want to go on more visits, but they go on your visit and you lock them down. That's it committed. And that's, that's exactly what TJ Thompson. That's what Steve Peichel and crew. Uh, that's what they did here. And it's, it's a huge get. He's a top 90 kid. And I, I think he's going to go higher than that too. When it's all said and done. Yeah. This kid is, you know, Rutgers fans are getting a little uh, a little spoiled by you know getting involved with these like top ten level players, but this kid is is phenomenal. Like if you watch his tape and don't fall in love with him as a player, then something is wrong with you. Like this kid you don't like basketball. Yeah, this kid puts a hundred percent effort in at all times. He's a great defender. He's got great court vision. He's puts it, he's got so many like behind the back passes, cross court like lasers, it's... perfect right into the shooter's pocket. Like he's a really good finisher around the rim. He's got a lot of athletic moves. Um, people are going to, at Rutgers fans are going to be reminded of, uh, of, uh, what's Jay Young, not Jay Young. Jacob uh, Young. Jacob Young, sorry. <laughs> because he's a lefty, because he's a little undersized, but they don't really play the same. Um, just super athletic. Like this is a kid that is like the perfect Pike commit in my opinion. Yeah. No, you, you hit the nail on the head there. Um, that's, he's quick. He's fast. He has handles. He can cross up a guy. He creates his own shot. He's got extremely high bounce, as you saw in the, the one clip we just mm -hmm. tweeted at the at Rutgers Rivals Twitter. He may, he does a pump fake, makes Bronny James look dumb on that, <laughs> and then goes down and dunks it on Big Ja. And if you don't know who Big Ja is, plays for overtime elite right now. He's six nine, three hundred something pounds. Like this is, and he just slams it on him. Uh, this this kid is ferocious finisher. And, and he plays with that swagger that you love. And yes. that's kind of like you haven't seen on this team since Jacob Young a little bit. Derek Simpson kind of has that little bit of swagger too. But um, I, I think this one's a little – like Delquan Warren's a little different. Like he just – he hits those big shots and it's just like he's going to probably talk shit. And it's, it's, it's hilarious to watch. But he, he can back it up with his play. He's, he's a really good player for Rutgers. And this just goes – this is number nine overall recruit in the rivals rankings mm -hmm. for uh, Pike or for Rutgers in general. And – Three of them, three of the top ten, are Pike guys. Like did Pike's recruiting, I don't care what you say. Like, yeah, he recruits some under the radar guys like Antoine Wolfolk, and uh, I guess even Derek Simpson was kind of under the radar a little bit. Yeah, he was. And and it's working out. Just trust the guy. Let him go. Let him do his thing. Like this is, I hate to say it, Rutgers is a basketball <laughs> school at this point. Like Pike it has is. this program still trending upward after not making. They haven't made the tournament for what? What was it? Thirty nine years or thirty something years? Uh, since ninety one, uh, so it was it was twenty nine, I think. Okay, so twenty nine years. They make the tournament twice in a row, three with an asterisk, if you want to say that. Mm -hmm. And then he has recruiting on the upswing. Like this program's 
you always think like he hits the the ceiling or the peak or the pike, uh-huh. yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but uh, it just keeps going. Like he just keeps going upward trend on this. So it's it's going to be insane to watch this lineup in like I'm not going to say 2020, 2025, I'll say or twenty twenty four if they if they land one of those big name guys, which we'll talk about in a second. But twenty twenty four could be or twenty twenty five, whatever lineup you want to look at, could be like a crazy good Rutgers team between Griffiths between. Um, Derek Simpson between this kid between Jermichael Davis is underrated too. Like, yep. It's this is just I, I don't even know. I'm like speechless. Like watching, like looking at all the rankings and watching the tapes, and I'm like, holy shit! Like, might, might yeah, be covering like a top 15 consistent program. Like, yeah, it's so weird that like we get a top 100 recruit who we had barely talked about as somebody we were recruiting, yeah. and that just kind of goes to show that like Pike is out there. He his he and his staff are really just like killing it. And yeah. we're just involved with so many top guys that, like, I'm super excited about this commit. Some people are going to, like, Rutgers fans can be the worst sometimes with, like, you know, not appreciating when a really good player commits to you. And I'm not saying everyone's like that, but some people are like, wait, I thought we were going to get a top 10 kid. It's like, this kid is phenomenal. What are you, what are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, no. It's it's very um, impressive. Top 100, though, and it's, like I said, he's number 91 right now, but I don't see any way he doesn't go higher than that. I think yep. maybe when it's all said and done, 75 or higher. But it's got potential to even go higher than that. So <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, some services have him in the top 50. So there's definitely room for advancement there. Uh, he also played in the, the same tournament at Rutgers that uh, Gavin Griffiths and his team played mm-hmm. at. Um, and he was also at the basketball game last night. So I guess he committed in person at the game, right? Yeah, he committed yeah. Um, into the staff afterwards or – yeah, I guess it was afterwards. Yeah, now I think about it when he tweeted. Or he didn't tweet it. He Facebooked it, which. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> so was he just like in the area the last few days? Because that tournament was on the 29th. Yeah. And, and then last night was the 30th. So uh, I think actually on the 28th, they played a game uh, down in. So I actually went to this big tournament down in Delaware, uh, at Lewis, Delaware. And it had like a couple of Rutgers targets. Blair Academy was there, Bergen Catholic, et cetera. All the uh, Monrovian prep from North Carolina. Oh, whatever. Anyway. He was uh, at a different tournament, which was like 25 miles or 25 minutes like this way. And I didn't even know about it, which kind of Damn. pisses me off. And I'm very <laughs> upset about that. But um, talking about like that. So, yeah, he's been he's been in the local area in the Northeast, just kind of bouncing around with his team. Uh, like, a, like a lot of schools are doing right now. Like, um, like I just said, there was like eight programs at this tournament. There was like seven programs at that other tournament. There was like six or eight games or eight programs at this one at the rack. Like, so, yeah, he's been in the area and just... Came to came to campus after or stayed at campus after the tour of the game and uh, did a visit and just loved it and now a uh, long way to go for him to sign but like hoops recruits very rarely decommit so I'm yeah confident. yep yeah it has to take like a coach getting fired <clears throat> to really change the the commitment status which I appreciate for his you know yeah. as, as as gray as uh, <laughs> hoops recruiting can be they do stick to their commitments most of the mm-hmm. time these players. Yeah. Um, so this is the first commit in the class of 2024, um, which is shaping up to potentially be this massive class for Rutgers because yeah. we're in it with two of the top. Well, we'll talk about a 2023 first. Uh, okay. Bay, what's, what's his name? Bay uh, Nadangu. I think that's how Nadangu it's pronounced. is closing in on a decision, and you, we were talking about this off the pod, but it sounds like he's their the, their number one target as a big man for this class. So tell us a little bit about him and where, where do you think he's leading right now? Yeah. So this is like a one, a one B type situation for a big man target. They mm-hmm. definitely want to add a big man to this class. And that's probably going to be it with, uh, along with Davis and Griffiths, obviously. Um, <clears throat> Nidangu is interesting because they have a pretty good relationship with Colorado prep. They have, we're in the top five for Bayfall. He ended up transferring, going to a different Colorado program, but, uh, this this one's interesting because he pay, he made this visit on his own dime, and didn't take an well he ran out of official visits actually but, um, they hosted him on a visit he's they have him in a, he has him in the top five now it sounds like uh, Nebraska and Michigan are making a pretty heavy push as well. We'll see what happens there. I, I do think the fact that he paid on his own dime and told like reporters that he wants to make this Rutgers visit before he makes his decision has the Scarlet Knights probably in their top three right now. I don't know where in the top three, um, trying to find a little bit more information out, uh, over the next day or two, but I mean, Ruck- Rutgers is definitely confident. They're going to get a big man, whether it be Bodo, whether it be an Adangu, they also offered the Juco big man, Emmanuel Ag- Agbo. 
I don't know if I pronounced that right, but out of Monroe College. He seems like he's probably target two after these two guys, but uh, they definitely want to get Bodo on campus as well, and that's another TJ Thompson uh, connection over there. Um, and he's, he's the one that offered uh, Ju- Juicelyn Bodo. So it's going to come down to those two, and we'll see what happens. But I, I think the fact that he made the visit on his own dime says, it says a lot. It does, for sure. Uh, so it sounds like they they prefer to go the the high school or JUCO <clears throat> route for their their big men this class rather than a transfer off after the season because you got to mm-hmm. assume that Cliff is at least going to enter his name in the NBA draft this year probably leaning towards leaving uh, so a big man is pretty huge uh, priority for the for the staff for sure yeah a hundred percent this this is he also uh, where is he from he's from somewhere in Africa that. I, th- I forget the connection there, but there's some kind of connection that like Pike has, or the, the staff has a good relationship with. Oh, he's from Senegal. Um, okay. And obviously, there's a ton of uh, relationships there with the staff and all that. And I, uh, the the Michigan one is the one I'd really watch out for because they want to pair him with Papa Conte, and mm. I think that's going to be a tough one. And he did just take an official there back in late November, mid November, something like that. So. It's it's going to be something to watch. He's really close with their their coaching staff. He's close with Jawan Howard, and he's close with Saudi Washington, who's like I think the main uh, recruiter for mm-hmm. him over there. But uh, it's going to come down to probably Michigan, Nebraska, and then Rutgers. Like I said, and maybe not in that order specifically, but we'll see. He wants to make a decision really quick or very relatively soon, I should say. So we'll see what happens. All right, so stay tuned because <clears throat> it sounds like that might be another uh, another bubble Podcast. that might pop soon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, so let's talk about that 2024 class that could be for Rutgers. So we're obviously in it with two of the top kids in the entire country for that class. Uh, let's get a little update on them because there has been a little bit of news that is not broken, but has bubbled up the last uh, few weeks. Um, yeah. so let's, let's start with Dylan Harper. So obviously he was at the John Wall holiday classic, I think in mm-hmm. North Carolina playing with Don Bosco. Looks like he made a visit to North Carolina and, We'll be visiting Duke as well while he's down there. Yeah. Uh, let's let's talk finish. about where his, his, where his uh, recruitment stands. Yeah, so he uh, obviously went down there. Duke went full force to go watch him play. They they brought the entire staff to watch him play. Now that's obviously pretty relatively significant uh, when John Shire and the entire coaching staff uh, comes to watch you. And so, some guys were asking me on the boards, and they're like, would Duke even take him right now? I'm like, dude, come – like, Dylan Harper's a top five prospect, probably – I know we don't have him top five yet, but I think our next update, he will be top five. Duke will take him, like, yes. 100%. You're not sending three years through your entire staff. Like, that's three assistants and a head coach to go watch one player if you're not taking that player. Um, yeah, like, Dylan is, yeah. a like, a lottery pick level NBA player. Like, if yeah. he was able to enter the draft instead of going to college, he'd probably go, like, in the lottery. Like, he's that level of a talent. I, I don't know if he'll be a one and done though, because like his his parents are very big on academics and getting a degree, and that that, that part's going to be interesting. I don't know what's going to happen there, but okay, it's, it's it's something to keep an eye on a little bit. But uh, yeah, no, it's definitely um. So now he was down there. Duke went full force. I think he went on. A, he's supposed to go on a visit this weekend. I think the game's today at Duke before, uh, versus Florida State, and he's already down there. So I think they're going to end up going to that game if I had to guess. People are freaking out because I think uh, one of the other networks put in a crystal ball for him. That guy also put in a crystal ball for Arizona State for Cliff like a month before he committed to Rutgers. And it's like, hey, and yep. dickhead, like wrong. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's I, I, th- I think there's still a long way to go. Obviously, you saw my, my tweet blow up a little bit uh, among the Harper family. Uh, as Ron Harper Sr. tweeted something about like Duke's next up and interpret it how you want. I interpreted it as if like Rutgers is going to be next up for, or not Rutgers, uh, that Duke is going to land or be the favorite for uh, Dylan and et cetera. He'll be the next one and done or whatever. Um, But then Mama Harper came in and just like shut that down pretty much. <laughs> yeah. And Ron, Ron quote tweeted it too, shut that down, basically said like Dylan's making his own decision, which I mean, I don't think we insinuated it either way. I think it was just more of like, it seems like Duke was winning there. And we'll, we'll see. Like, I think Duke has a pretty good shot. I've been saying for a while, it's Rutgers or Duke. It's Rutgers or Duke. Indiana's there, too, but they're a distant third. They're like that dark horse candidate that everyone likes to use that term. Um, But, yeah, no, I think there's a long shot here. Like he's, like I said, I'll probably visit Duke. I think he'll be at Rutgers again. He's already at the rack, what, twice this year? Twice this month. So, yeah. 
it's only a matter of time before he gets there again, I'm sure. It's so local that he can make the trip whenever. Um, yeah, so so we'll see. I, I, I don't know where I still I still kind of confident that Rutgers has a good shot with Dylan. I know people are like hesitant now, but I'm I'm pretty confident. I mean, I do too, because if you look at <clears throat> every time he's gone on a, a visit, it seems like those teams have made up ground, which is what should happen on a visit. It's like you're yeah. going and seeing like the highlights of a campus, whether that be Indiana, whether that be Duke, but he's always made his way back to Rutgers for games. And I think he probably feels most comfortable at Rutgers because he's been going to games there basically his whole, like, teenage mm-hmm. life because of his brother. So I think he knows exactly what Rutgers is. He knows he could, you know, be a really good player for Rutgers. And he's seen his brothers in the NBA now. It's clear that Pike can put mm-hmm. guys in the NBA. I think <clears throat> he just kind of has to figure out what he wants. Yeah, and very much. Does he want to go where he's comfortable and where he, he has the best relationship? That would be Rutgers. Does he want to go somewhere, maybe blaze his own trail, you know, set himself up to be a one and done? Possibly that would maybe be Duke. I don't know. That's, I'm speculating here, but I don't think Rutgers, even if he has a very good visit to Duke, is going to be out of it. Um, because I don't even think, like, from what I understand, he's not like going to make a, a commitment in like early 2024. No. Like, 2023. He's still going to wait a little bit. Oh, 2023. I'm sorry. Yeah. So, so we'll I do I do have a little bit of info too. That I haven't shared yet. Um, so January 22nd, our, our friends over at the front office are running this big tournament event. It's called the NJ Challenge. They did it last year. It's like a big, like, uh, it's, it's like the holiday tournaments. It's the same thing. Um, yep. So uh, I know Don Bosco Prep is going to be playing Hudson Catholic in that one. Interesting. I, I heard an interesting rumor. It's going to be a red out. And the Riot Squad's bringing quite a few people to go watch Dylan's game. So for uh, for those who want to know where to watch this game, where would that be held at? That would be at um, – hold on. I just had it popped up. Ramapo College. Ramapo College. Okay. Yes. So there's going to be so, like a multi-game tournament. But uh, the last game is going to feature quite a bit of red. And if you remember the last prospect that the Riot Squad went and did this for. Mr. Cliff, right? He ended up at Rutgers. So, well, that's so Hudson <laughs> Catholic also has a top – Kid that Rutgers is recruiting, right? An undersized guard. Uh, is that Pettiford? If I'm correct. I think it is. Jihad Pettiford. I don't think they end up landing him for what it's worth, but. Yep. Um, yeah, it is Pettiford. Number 21 in the country. Uh, yeah. I, I think that one's a little bit of a long shot, but uh, regardless, I mean, it's for, for the Riot Squad to go out and send a bunch of people. We'll see what happens, but. Uh, yeah, if you if you want to figure uh, make your plans now, January twenty second. I think it's an eight thirty game. I think it was. Tell you in a second. Uh, oh, five o'clock game. So even better. So I can get home early. That's a five o'clock game. <clears throat> it's on a Sunday. So mark your calendars if you want to support Dylan and uh, make a push for him to come to Rutgers. Yes, and uh, another Rutgers target, um, Darius Adams, top twenty five. Top 2025 oh, sure. target will be playing in that event as well. So something to keep an eye on. Man of Squad kids. Top, yeah, that's that's another huge target for Rutgers. Um, yeah. You know, a viral clip from this weekend, too. I don't know if you saw it. No, I didn't Just see. like taking a kid's soul on a, on a, a, a fast break dunk. That's the way to put it. Um, so we talked about Dylan. Now we got to go to the other top 10 target that Rutgers has in 2024. I Sorry, I watched, just watched it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Poor kid. What did he think he was going to do? I, they, were up, <laughs> they were up 44 to 13 and a half. Like, oh, that kid, yeah. like, I'm shocked he's still at Manasquan. Like, he shouldn't be there. Like, he should be playing. I agree. Else. I'm but, shocked too. Um, but some oh. of these kids, like the Derek hey. Simpson type, they don't want to, they don't want to go to like a, you know, Basketball factory. They want to stay where they're at. Yeah, I respect it. But anyway. Yeah, Ace Bailey. Uh, Russ Wood dropped a nuclear bomb on the boards uh, a couple days ago saying that Rutgers is in the lead or it sounds like he is leaning towards Rutgers, uh, which sent reverberations throughout the board, something I, you know, you rarely see something like that happen. (laughs) So tell us a little bit about where Rutgers stands in Ace Bailey's recruitment. Yeah, so, I mean, first off, I, I texted Russ. I'm like, why would you put it in this most random war room thread from, like, September? And he's like, well, I just searched Bailey, and that was the last one, that, like, last time you mentioned him. And I was like, you don't have to go based on my mentions. Go based on, like, a <laughs> thread. Like, yeah, that's some pretty yep. big news if you're going to drop a bomb that says, like, yeah, I'm hearing uh, from high major coaches that Rutgers is going to land Ace Bailey and uh, 
the commitment's going to be soon. And I'm like, what? The, dude, uh, number one, text me too. Like, yeah, well, yep. I would like to know. I go on the board like after a couple hours off and I'm like, what the hell happened? Like, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I, like we've been saying it for a while. East Bailey was down to like a top two and it was Auburn or Rutgers, Auburn or Rutgers. It sounded like Auburn had the lead because the the whole connection is his AAU coach, uh, the AAU coach is Omar Cooper for uh, Athletes of Tomorrow, it's called. He is, his son, Sharif Cooper, went to Auburn, played for Auburn, and now in the NBA, I believe, or the G League, one of the two. I think he's actually going back and forth. But uh, so he, obviously there's a pretty big connection there. Cooper's sister has a godfather, played in WNBA, free agent, played in Tennessee. Her godfather is Brandon Knight. There's the connection there. there so go. now it's it's a whole like like it's the the Charlie <clears throat> scene from uh, Always Sunny again. Yeah. It's like this dot and this dot and this dot and this dot. Yeah. But uh, Brandon Knight's <laughs> been putting in a lot of work here. Um, they just landed his uh, Brandon Knight just landed his teammate in Jamichael Davis. So I mean it's it's going to be something to watch. Now it sounds like Rutgers is still right there and uh, maybe not. I don't know if they're in the lead or not because I haven't really heard anything from sources. I do know he wants to commit soon, as a lot of 2024s do in a. At, at this point, it seems like hoops is just getting pushed up more and more and more. It's almost like turning into baseball recruiting where it's like, oh, yeah, we went to the top yeah. 25 or top 2025 kid. It's like, dude, you have like three years before he signed. <laughs> yep. But, uh, yeah, Rutgers has been pursuing him for quite some time. He went on an official visit. He took an unofficial as well. I think that was June or something like that. But uh, I wouldn't be shocked to see him on campus in the next month or so. I know um, the staff's pushing to get him on for a game day visit to check that out. It's obviously a different atmosphere when you get to see the game and in person and watch yeah. Pike and crew and watch the crowd go insane. And the yeah. rack is, the rack is, we all know what it is. It's, it's insanity and it's got that nostalgia feel to it. So it's old school. So yeah, I mean, I think they'll get them on campus again. Um, we'll see what happens because Texas is pushing UCLA is pushing for visits as well. And obviously Auburn wants the kid. So it's it's going to be interesting to see what happens. But Russ, Russ has some pretty good sources. He's uh, very well connected. And he said that one came from a pretty, pretty big name coach uh, in college basketball. So if that guy's hearing it. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Yeah, and these guys, it's a big, you know, it's a big network um, of, of, you know, information trading. So I'm sure mm -hmm. if he was posting it, it's legit. Um, yeah. So yeah, that'd be, that'd be amazing. Uh, because obviously we, we alluded to, you know, you take Jamichael Davis, maybe there was like a few guys who like similar to, uh, to Jamichael and the tiebreaker mm -hmm. would be who has, you know, the elite, uh, <laughs> best friend slash teammate. And it yeah. was Jamichael Davis, not to take anything away from Jamichael Davis as a player, but, uh, obviously that would be, a, you know, something that would help there. So the smoke is starting to billow more and more. Uh, yeah. It's... You got to imagine also landing a guy like Ace Bailey, landing a guy like Doquan Warren has to make Harper think a little bit more about, you know, okay, there's going to be yeah. elite talent here at Rutgers too. It's not like, you know, Duke tends to land like top 25 kids every year. And like, they, they get the idea, like we're going to all, oh, this freshman class going to come in and win a title, blah, blah, blah. It's going to be the same kind of vibe at Rutgers if, you, if we can land Ace Bailey. Yeah, so. I'm I'm kind of intrigued now because like I I know people like Dylan's got a pretty good shot at or Rutgers has a pretty good shot at Dylan as as well as Duke, but now you added two guards like two well known guard or like two point guards I guess you can consider Delquan a point guard sort of he's like a shooting guard. Does does that mean like do you take Delquan knowing like thinking like now it's like all right like you see Dylan and the smoke with Duke and it's like all right we're gonna take Delquan then and then we'll take Aris Bailey or Ace Bailey. So it, I'm kind of curious now if that means like they're starting to like shy, not shy away. I don't know how to put the, the terminology of it, but it seems like maybe they know Dylan's starting to lean this way. So they're like, all right, like Delquan, you're in. Michael Davis, you're in. And now that there's your guard lineup. Like, and you still have Derek Simpson too. So that's another guard that's going to yeah. be there for a couple of years. So I, I'm starting to think they might start. I, I don't want to be negative about it, but I feel like there's a little bit more smoke with that Duke thing especially with the tweet from his father too, which I, I know you can't read too much into it as uh, his mom and Ron Harper said, but something to keep an eye on. So we'll see. Absolutely. Um, but obviously recruiting sounds like it's on the up and up for Rutgers uh, as we all kind of knew already, but just stay tuned because it sounds like yeah. there might be more news on uh, 
in the class of 2023 and 2024 <clears throat> in the near future. Yeah. So, so Rutgers had a game last night, believe it or not. Uh, I'm <laughs> sure most fans believe it. But uh, yeah. <laughs> Rutgers looked phenomenal against Coppin State. They won 90 to 57. The game was never in question. Rutgers just dominated this team from start to finish. Uh, offensively, they came out red hot. I think uh, Cam Spencer went five for five from three in the first half. The team just in general looked like it had its legs back. They looked healthy, and that's kind of what we need because you know Big Ten play starts, you know, next week. We play at Mackey Arena on Monday night, uh, which is going to be a tough game. But uh, you, this is the kind of performance that you needed to see from this Rutgers team to, to really just kind of kick off this this stretch because I think Danny Breslauer put it up. We play 18 games in the next 65 days, and we just went back to back games with six days of rest. That's not going to happen the rest of the season. Nope. We're we're in the gauntlet now. Uh, so what did you see last night that really just impressed you from Rutgers? Uh, defense, defense, defense. Uh, they just they yep. locked down Coppin State. I know we were talking in our, our text chat at one point. We were saying, like, are, are they going to score, like, 40, like, 50 maybe? <laughs> like, it's, uh, yeah, no, it's pretty pretty much a blowout. Everyone did their, their job. Um, a lot of rebounds, obviously, 53 to 27. <laughs> Yeah, um, that that was ridiculous. Um, Caleb they got one just, offensive rebound compared yeah, to our seventeen. Caleb was pretty great. Uh, Caleb was great overall in the stat sheet. If you if you just read the box score alone, it's like holy shit! Like um, everyone had a good game, and you're seeing the, the rotation start to form, which is which is kind of nice. It's going to be an eight man rotation, like it's always been under Pike for the most part. He has one backup guard, one backup forward, one backup big man, and that's what is for or wing, whatever you want to call the forward. Um, and that's, that's pretty much what it's going to be the rest of the way. It seems like, um, I thought, uh, Mawat Mag didn't shoot too well, but I thought he did really well defensively. Uh, there was one possession where him and Sam Sessoms were going almost like an ISO ball type situation. He was just like in front of him the entire time. And I think they forced, uh, Sessoms to chuck it up top of the key. And it was just like a bank off, not even a bank. It was like the ugliest, like the squares here. And the shot was like here. It was yeah. just like, what the hell? Like. But uh, Coppin now that, State was throwing up a lot of ugly shots last night. Honestly, though, like if you're a program like that, the only way you're going to probably beat Rutgers is just getting lucky on threes, and that's why yep. they took 31 of them. Now <laughs> you, you can't hit six of them, but that's that's bad. But uh, I, I can't really speak from Rutgers' side either from three point shooting because that's been abysmal this year. Um, yeah, outside of Cam last night, when five for seven, the rest of the team was uh, four for 19, which is yeah. less than 25 percent. Not Oof. great. Two of twelve in the second half too. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. They need to fix that. Um, I, I get it. Like defensively, it's great if you could hold teams to under the speed limit, like Pike says. Then that that's phenomenal. But uh, this this is a good warm up. It's a good warm up just to get you get the juices flowing again and get you yep. ready for uh, get you past the holidays and get you ready for Big Ten play, which is going to be it's going to be tough. It's not going it's not yep. going to be easy. This this first game kind of. Uh, I'm not saying it's a litmus test by any means, but it's it's a hard fucking game like to go into Mackey Arena playing the number one team in the country we'll, we'll have to see what happens there it's going to be interesting but this game was a good warm up yeah so just to talk a little bit about that game I do think that Rutgers isn't going to be super intimidated by that environment like if you think about it we have a team we have a, a group of guys a group of veterans who beat the number one team in the nation last year in Purdue at home this is a team that's got multiple guys who's gone into Mackey Arena and won at Mackey Arena. So they know what to expect. They've won there. Mm-hmm. They've won at home. They've won when they were the number one team in the nation. I don't think they'll be intimidated by this team. I think it's more about can we, you know, can we shoot above our our necks a little bit from three? Because mm-hmm. 25, you know, 20, we shot 21% outside of Cam Spencer last night. We're not going to win if we shoot like that against Purdue. No. They just really need to take advantage of their opportunities. Purdue's not a team that likes to play with pace. I think they're in the bottom, like, 70 of the of Division One basketball in terms of pace. So if we can kind mm-hmm. of push their limits there. Like, Zach Eady, for as good as he's been this year, he's slow. Like, he's not a guy who's going to, you know, be able to run up and down the court. They want to mm-hmm. slow things down, get the ball inside to him, kind of run their offense through Eady. And if we can kind of get them off that game, I think that's how we kind of win this. Yeah, um, that's going to be a cool but- matchup. Yeah, Eden, definitely. it's just they're two totally – it's the two styles of big men. You got the old school yep. big bulky dude versus the rim-running athletic guy. And it's like – it's, it's I, I don't know. I don't know like what that matchup's going to end up being because Cliff 
struggles against younger or younger, smaller guys. Obviously, we we've seen that mm-hmm. a little bit. Now put him up against the big dude, and Cliff's lengthy enough. They might be able to like put a pretty nice poster on him. Yeah, That's and good. if you look at if you look at who Purdue's played recently, they haven't played a, a lot of great teams. Like they played that early season stretch where like the holiday tournaments they look great, or like the early mm-hmm. season tournaments. The last few opponents they played Florida A and M. They played New Orleans, they played Davidson, they played at Nebraska, they played Hofstra, they played Minnesota. Like, that is the opponents they played in, like, December. That is not a great yeah. stretch. They they barely beat Nebraska. They won by three at Nebraska. They won by eight okay. against yeah. Davidson. The rest of the teams aren't good. Everybody knows Minnesota is, like, by far the worst team in the, uh, yeah. the Big Ten right. as well. So this the group of teams they played have been bad. Um yeah, it's just that one stretch, West Virginia, Gonzaga, Duke. That's the only thing that's kind of keeping them number one right now, I'm assuming. Mm-hmm. But, uh, like, even even Rutgers' schedule, like, if you really, like, I saw Brad Watchell tweet something, like, it, and it, it says, it's like, Rutgers only has one quad one slash two win victory this season so far mm-hmm. and two quad three losses, but they're number 25 in the net. Like, yep. in, and it's, old, he says it, it's because, net. what'd you say? Now they're... They're number 22 in the net after last oh, even, night. Yeah, and they're number 21 in Ken Palm. <clears throat> That's crazy. And then it, it's cause, because they're by games. Like last season, they beat those by game teams by 15.4 points per game. Yep. <clears throat> this season, they're beating those guys by 31.1. Like, yep. Pike's not taking any chances at all. And yeah, maybe they, they probably want, lost one or two. They probably should have. Obviously, oh, I shouldn't say should have. They definitely should have. The Ohio State one. Yep. Um, the Seton Hall one was bad too. The Temple one, like if they were healthy, they should they would probably would have won that. And it would have been even higher. Like this, they had a well, I know people like to knock the schedule a little bit, and I, I'm guilty of it too. But it's it's been a tough stretch so far. I think putting my conspiracy hat on here, losing that Ohio State game probably caused us to not be fully invested, not fully invested mm-hmm. because that's not the right word, fully engaged at Seton Hall. Like Pike had said yeah. that there was a hangover effect, and that was. The Seton Hall game is one of the ugliest games we've ever seen for Rutgers play. Yeah. Um, so if you win the Ohio State game, I think there's a good chance you beat Seton Hall as well because mm-hmm. they'll be flying high. They're, they are in a very emotional team, which can be good and bad because good, you you know, you're riding this wave bad. You have these hangovers. Oh, yeah. So, so it, it's tough. So I, I do think that uh, Rutgers has a better chance than maybe the, the rest of the nation is giving them uh, against – against Purdue because they haven't played a good mm-hmm. game in a month or a good team in a month. So they got to be locked in for Rutgers because Rutgers has played good teams this month. Like they beat Indiana who's ranked top 10. They're obviously overrated, but they played a really, they should have beaten Ohio state at Ohio state. Like this is a team that kind of has played some tough ones and I don't think Purdue really has. So Yeah. And it's end of the day, it's, it's college basketball. We see upsets all the time. Who did Iowa lose yep. to some like Eastern Illinois state or something like that? Yep. Yeah, they had so, a really bad loss. It could um, it could happen to anyone. Any given, I know it's not any given Saturday, but it's like any given night, I guess, for basketball. And it's uh, they, they I wouldn't be shocked if they pulled it off, to be honest. Yeah, the, the Iowa loss was so bad that you couldn't even bet the money line on the team they lost to. That's, that's like how that's how favored they were. I think they were favored by like thirty two points. Something like they that. Lost. Yeah. Imagine. Oh, imagine if you could bet the money line. Holy hell. <laughs> yeah. Just hindsight. Oh, well. So, yeah, uh, I'm really excited for that Purdue game. Um, and then the, the kind of the, the rest of the, the Big Ten stretch moving forward here. Yeah. Um, let's pivot to football because uh, people are going to ask about the offense coordinator role that is still vacant. And if we're looking at <laughs> where we've been on this uh, this timeline here, it's now 84 days since Sean Gleason was fired. 36 days since the end of the season. So that's now five weeks after the season ended where we do not have an offensive coordinator. I saw that you posted a it, it OC will, hot board that yeah. you took down. Um, I'm debating adding one name. We'll, we'll get into that. But yeah, you, yeah the, the days, like it just, they just drag on at this point. So you just announced it like, it's been well, too long. Like Rutgers fans are also dealing with this like weird cope <laughs> of like thinking of it's like it's kind of like the stages of grief, but it's like the stages of cope. It's like coming up with all these different excuses as to why we don't have an OC. It's like, oh well, Shiano has to find the right guy. Oh well, 
you know, we're waiting for the bowl games to be over. We're waiting for the NFL season to be over. We're waiting for this to happen. And then all around us, we're seeing offensive coordinators leave their respective programs for another program before their bowl game, like Phil Longo and a bunch of others. It's not just them. Yeah. We're seeing guys from the NFL announce that they're leaving after the season. A guy like Liam Cohen leaving the Rams to go back to Kentucky. So all these excuses are just like fading like sugar cubes and hot water for Rutgers fans. But like when it comes down to it, it's just not a very attractive job. That is why Rutgers is not, does not have an offensive coordinator right now. Yeah. Because when you have the resources, AKA the money and you can't find a guy, it is for, <laughs> it is because one, we don't have a lot of offensive talent. Two, Shiano is not easy to work for. And three, we're playing a really hard schedule. Like if you- It's a rebuild, most, it's a big rebuild. Like, it's a big rebuild. A lot of these coaches, they're trying to progress their career and they can't really risk a really, like they can't risk a, a, a down dip in their career mm -hmm. path. So this, if you, if you, if you put together a really good offense at Rutgers, it is a springboard to a really good job, but that is a huge risk because you could do the same thing at another college. Like look at, and I'll just throw an example out here. Graham Harrell got hired from West Virginia to Purdue this past off season. Mm -hmm. He, it's probably like a lateral move if you look at it. Like it's not like a huge upgrade or a huge downgrade, but they went and got a guy like Hudson Card, who he probably had some kind of in the both Texas guys. Yeah, that's the kind of thing where it's like, okay, now it makes sense as a move up. So, <clears throat> all that being said, what are you hearing about the offensive coordinator role? Um, it sounds like it's going to get done within. It's going to be the new year, obviously. I would assume at this point we're already halfway. Yeah, we've got today. about well, we got <laughs> as we're recording this. 13 and a half hours left in the yeah. year. So, so now there, there's a new name, obviously, that emerged over the past couple of weeks. That'd be Andy Souter. And that kind of speculated a little bit from the fact that he wasn't retained from uh, the new coaching, the new coach over at, uh, what's his name? Something Burns. Kenny Burns? Kenny Something. Burns, yeah. Kenny Burns. I was right on that. Um, <clears throat> it did sound like Shiano kind of tipped his hand a bit in the National Signing Day press conference. Because, you know, National Signing Day, we're supposed to ask about recruits, right? No, we asked yeah. about the OC about like eight times. No offense, Fonseca. I know you had to, but like, <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's, so he kind of tipped his hand by saying, like, he's like, yeah, you know, some coaches are still working with places too that I'm considering. And it's like, all right, well, you just go to every bowl game that's left and figure that out. And that's where yep. names like, um, like Ben McDaniels, who we had on our original hot board, still there. Uh, he's working down at, H or over at Houston with the Texans. Um, John Garrett, who was actually, I think he was his OC in Tampa. Yep. He was the, the pass game coordinator or whatever. Same thing. Not really, but you know what I mean. Uh, yep. he, uh, he was still working as an analyst over at Florida State. The Pennsylvania native, he's a name to really keep a close eye on. Um, they, they, you want a guy that can develop quarterbacks too. I guess it's not a necessity per se, but you, you kind of need to. And that's where guys like Nick Charlton come into play. He coached the best offense at UConn in the world this year. But mind you, he didn't have wide receiver one. He didn't have QB one. He was working with a freshman running back. Um, and he, he's got an interesting connection, too, because he coached with Harris Simiak and Heather Min at Maine from 2015 to 2019. And then uh, took over the main job or, yeah, took over the main head coaching job after Harris Simiak left for Minnesota, I think it was. Mm -hmm. um, so there's obviously a connection there. Uh, it's something to keep an eye on with him, but he's a he's a QB developer too. It's just uh, Joe Daly's out there still, who I actually like as one of the better candidates. Um, go, uh, yeah, I forgot to mention about Andy Souter. Everyone likes to talk about Andy Souter and how like this isn't so much of a knock on him, but it is a little bit. Yeah, he coached under Art Bryles, Tom Herman, Dino Babers, though the great offensive line in college football. Coached under Sean Lewis. But Sean Lewis was kind of in control of that offense. That's why Sean Lewis is going to Colorado as an offensive coordinator. Like, yeah, they had the most potent offense in 2020 with 49 points per game, which is wild. And he might have learned a couple <laughs> things here or there. But I think it's still a risk because his last OC job before Kent State was San Jose State, and they kind of stunk. Mind you, it was only one year, yep. but it was like they, were, they weren't good like at all. Yep. So now it's, it's getting interesting. I know Joe Conlon has been mentioned by people, but it sounds like he – he didn't really talk to Rutgers at all, which is interesting as well because I thought he was a pretty good coach. Plus, he has O-line coaching experience, which is neat at Rutgers at this point. Yep. Um, Mike Shanahan's been mentioned, but again, 
wide receivers a coach mostly for most of his career. So I, I still think it's going to be a guy that can develop quarterbacks and it's going to be an OC. And and you got to get this done within the first two weeks of January because you got a junior yeah. day coming up. You got another junior day coming up. One's, one's on the 15th, and I think that's the out-of-state one. And then they do a jersey one with all the top jersey guys and stuff like that. But it's getting – it's getting annoying, like from my point of view at least. It's like just name somebody. Like, yeah, because this is not how most programs in the country operate. Like most programs, if they make a change, they. Six and days, I'm not saying in, I'm not days. saying an in season change. Yeah, it's a week. Yeah. If it's if it's more than two weeks, it's a problem. Ours yeah. has been a month and a half now. Mm-hmm. It's clearly, and it's been almost three months since the firing happened. So, it's not a great look by any means i think the veneer of like looking for the right guy has faded and i think we all kind of see it for what it is right now he's struggling to find the guy because yeah. he's been turned down or whatever actually is happening nobody actually knows I, that's another thing like you could reach out to every assistant coach shiano has basically told guys in the past like if this leaks like you're off the list so it, the information that is supposedly flying around about these guys actually talking to Rutgers. There's no. Yeah. Shiano has it on lock and key. I don't care what BS you're going to post here and there on, on tweets and message boards and that. No one knows a single thing but Greg himself. Maybe yeah. one of the coaches saw something, but they're not going to. They, they know better than to leak stuff like that. They're on lockdown as well. Yep. Now, uh, the other name I actually forgot to mention who. I don't know if it's a good name or not, to be honest. It's a uh, Mike Bajakian. Bajakian. I don't know if I pronounced that right. He's Northwestern's offensive coordinator. He's a Rivervale, New Jersey native. Went to Bergen Catholic High School. So there's a ton of connections there. Was a grad assistant at Rutgers from 98 to 99. Coached in the NFL. Coached in, in the Big Ten before uh, with Michigan as a GA. And obviously at Northwestern, duh. Uh, was offensive coordinator for Boston College in 2019. But like, this past season... He ran a worse offense than Rutgers ran. And it's like That's not great. No, like don't do that. Like they were a one in eleven team who lost eleven straight games this year. In terms of total offense, Northwestern was one oh eight. Uh Rutgers was one twenty seven, so comparably bad. Um and it's not like he did this last year too. It's not like, yeah, it's a fluke year, whatever. It was sixteen point mm-hmm. six points per game the year before that. Yeah. And it was like 24 the year before that, which is a little better, but it just, it went like, instead of going up, it went down. Like, Yeah. Northwestern had a worse scoring offense than Rutgers this year. They put up 13.8 points per game. Um, Rutgers was, so Northwestern was 128th at 131. Rutgers was 124th out of 121, or 131. Rutgers scored 17.4 points per game. Um, so there's only four teams that scored less than 14 points per game this year, and Northwestern was one of them. So. Yeah, that's not a great look. That's bad. Um, yeah, I don't know, but you need you need the OC at this point. Like I'm looking now, like I, I forget who said it. I think it was Pat Hobbs, right? He said I always have a list of five names or something like that, mm-hmm. like ready to go. And he he kind of like that's what should have happened here. Like you should have a list of five names ready to go, and it's like all right, if one says no, two says no, three says yes, four says just yes. All right, we'll figure out between those two and narrow it down. Done. This, like the Eddie Jordan hire, just to compare, mm-hmm. or fire Eddie Jordan firing and Steve Peichel hiring, nine days. Like nine days. And I don't count day one yeah. because that's a fire. And I don't count the day he was – I guess you can count the day he was hired, yeah, obviously. So it's probably eight days technically. Yeah. Like it just – this should have been done. Like this should have been done a while ago, which leads me to believe why I posted on the boards. Like it's been turned down a couple times, and that's – not like I, you, you stated all the facts before. It makes sense. Like it's not like a crazy yeah. theory. There's been multiple programs who have had their OC hired away and they've hired the replacement in a you week, know, two weeks. Five days. At most. Right. Yeah. It's crazy. This is not normal. And it's really unfortunate because you could spin it as much as you want, but you know, sometimes the facts speak much louder than the spin. That's all yeah. I'm saying. Yeah, it's, what are you going to do? I mean, you need somebody. And then don't don't give me, like, I, I know he said in the press conference that offensive recruits aren't asking about it. I, I don't believe that. Like, you don't know what I else is We also know run, it's but... not true. You've spoken yeah. with offensive recruits who have either visited or have decided not to visit because <clears throat> there's no offensive coordinator in place. Mm-hmm. 
<clears throat> CJ Deeper. <laughs> oh, damn, you said outed him. Um, uh, Al- Alabama bound, mind you. Now, yeah. Holy shit! What a what a come up. Yeah, uh, um, and th- that's not the only one. There's been multiple, but I feel confident because he's going elsewhere that it doesn't really matter at this point. Yeah, um, no, it doesn't. Um, even text me the day he committed. Jerk. Like, damn. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> um. So yeah, it's it's rough. It's yeah, out here. it's it's you got to get it done. Like I can't stress it enough. This has to be done. Like day one, January first. I don't care. Break the news on. I don't know because like if it's a big name, you don't want to do it January first or January second, whatever the college football playoff is. Um, it's today. It's oh, it's today. Jesus, I am so. Off right <laughs> now. Um, you probably want to wait till like it depends. If it's a big flurry hire, you want your own specific day and all that. If it's not. Do it during halftime in today's game. <laughs> like, yeah, yep. hide it, hide it in like that yep. little news corner. <clears throat> but <clears throat> we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, there's really not much else to be said on that aspect. Yep. Uh, so we covered a lot today. I you know we've taken a bit of a of a hiatus because really, quite frankly, there wasn't much to talk about over the holidays. That's um, true. No basketball games. No real news. Uh, is there anything else you wanted to hit on before we signed off here? Um, January 15th is going to be one of the uh, official vis- or official junior day visits. Um, Bo Melton signed with the Packers, and he's on their active roster, so we might get to see him this week. Yeah, that's huge because they're pushing for so – they're suddenly alive in the playoffs. Um, I think by 538, they have yeah. a um, – I have it open here. They have a 27% chance of making the playoffs right now. If mm-hmm. they beat Minnesota, that jumps to 55%, and they're favored against Minnesota. Yeah. Um, if they win out, if they win their next two games, they're at a 90% chance to make the playoffs. So. Yeah, it seems like we're going to have a uh, pretty significant Rutgers contingent in the uh, in the playoffs between Pacheco, between uh, the Rams in? Or the Char- Chargers? The, Ram- uh, Chargers, the, Chargers yeah. the Chargers are in. Yep. They okay. clinched so last week. Sebastian Joseph Day, um, another one. I think, it's gonna be interesting. I think Croft's on the 49ers still, right? Croft is on the 49ers. They're in um, the Titans with Avery, uh, Trey Avery. Basically, it's it all comes down to next week. If they beat the, the Jags, they're in. Mm-hmm. Uh, who else? Bengals, to... Clark Harris, the great, the GOAT. Bengals, Clark Harris, they're in. Gus Edwards on the, the Ravens, they are in. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, there's going to be a, a Rutgers. Andy DePola, uh, the long snapper for the Vikings. They basically have a guy in almost every playoff scene, so. Yeah. Uh, you'd love to see another Rutgers guy get a ring. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. Hopefully it happens. Well, uh, time will tell, I guess, at this point. No Giants on – or no Rutgers on the Giants. They're a little disappointing. Yeah, that's true. I didn't even realize that. Yeah. You'd think there'd be at least one or two guys. Although they haven't really had Rutgers guys. In a while. Like they had Sean O'Hara, yeah. obviously. But. Yeah, of course. It's been a while, though. We'll see what happens. Maybe, yeah, maybe they draft one this year. Who knows? Maybe. But, uh, All right, guys. Well, we really appreciate you tuning in. Uh, happy New Year. Happy holidays to everybody out there. Thanks again for listening and making uh, this such a great year for this podcast and bigger and better things on to the future. But for me and Richie, this has been another edition of the Night Report Podcast. Signing off.